Hello, I'm Jeremy Ford and I'm going to show you how to paint successful pastel landscapes using a variety of useful tips and techniques along the way. The first thing we'll do is look at some of the papers we'll be using. Although I use a variety of different pastel papers, my paper of choice is Claire Fontaine's pastel matte paper, which comes in a variety of different colours. I often let the subject matter dictate what colour paper I use, and here are a few examples. You can see the colour of the paper around the edge here, and how I've left little bits of the paper showing on the dry sand and here and there in the clouds. Here's a darker brown paper, and I chose this colour to show some of the wet sand, which is darker, and uh, there's little bits of it showing here and there throughout the beach. This colour paper is called anthracite, it's almost black. Because there are a lot of shadows in this picture, this colour paper was the perfect choice. Using uh, an ordinary brush, I've put some of the alcohol in the lid, and then you can move it around a little bit. And you can see immediately it darkens the pastel, but it seals the, the pastel uh, into the paper. And so anything that I put on top of this will cover beautifully because this is uh, sealed into the paper and you won't disturb it. It's uh, pretty much the same as um, a fixative. Most pastel fixatives are alcohol based and they darken the pastel. So I generally tend not to use pastel fixatives at the end of a painting, but they're very useful for using at an intermediary stage if you want to put more pastel on. Now that's dry, that's given me the perfect surface to work on top of. And if I put rub my finger over that, you'll see it doesn't come off because the pastel's sealed into the paper. And now if I go over some of this uh, sky uh, or any part of the picture, you can see that it takes perfectly well. The colour underneath doesn't affect the colour that I'm putting on top. So some of these colours really go over the top of that very, very nicely, very easily. It just gets you started and gives you a picture in immediate mood and it takes away the frightening white space that might be a little bit daunting otherwise. So here's a finished version of that painting. And although you can't see the original underpainting coming through here, it does give you a picture in immediate mood and it's a great way to get your picture started. 